Hey YouTube, how are you guys doing tonight? Kevin here coming back at you with another video. Okay, so I have been getting a lot of questions. I'm trying to get to them all. I still haven't um, got my coil specs yet. Um, still trying to find that. But um, I will. I know how to test them, but I want to give you guys accurate, dead-on specifications on that. So I think I do a, an ignition, not an ignition, but a charge coil. Um, what you call it there? Thing. video okay so on the video right here i want to talk to you guys on the plate you'll see that there's a fine coil here what i mean by fine is the winding how fat these ones are and these ones and how thin these ones are okay so these two right here run your lights and charge your battery that's all they do they're separate circuit completely from your um this is runs your ignition Okay, so I want to show you guys what that looks like and how to test. Tonight we're going to talk about your charge coils. That's all we're talking about tonight. We're going to do a series on this, on the Magneto and how to test it and all that happy stuff. So, and I am going to show you how to check your points using a multimeter. Okay, so remember, 5 ohms is the enemy. We want under 5 ohms. So I have my multimeter set to 200. Okay, I want to put that out there because a lot of people do uh, videos on this and don't tell you about the settings on the multimeter. So, we, we want um, we want under 5 point whatever ohms, 5.0 ohms, under 5 ohms. Anything over 5 ohms, or actually I'm going to go on a limb and say 4 ohms because that would be a short. Um, or darn close to it. So, I like them in the 1s and 2s, but we'll go from there. Okay. So, I isolated, this is from a KE100 charge coil. These right here, completely separate circuit. I took them off of a uh, magneto plate like this to show you what the circuit looks like. Okay? Now, on your KE, you have these both wires go up, and they have a white connector on them, and they go into your voltage regulator, which that'll be another, another video. We're just going to talk about these bad boys, and I'm going to show you how to check your points with uh, a multimeter. So anyway, 5 ohms. We want under 5 ohms on these. So what I did was I set this to 200 once again. And it doesn't matter which way, this is non-directional. Okay, so I'm going to pause you and hook this up, and then I'll be right back. Okay, I don't have my tripod, so I have to do it like this. I apologize. Okay, so you can see right here, I'm at 1.4, 1.5 ohms. Okay, this is good. It's under 5 ohms. Anything left of the decimal point, that's what we want, under 5. Okay, so what I did was I hooked the multimeter up to one of these, one yellow, and the one up to the next yellow, right there. So I'm measuring the continuity, the ohms, going around each coil. Okay, and if these were, if there was a short in here, this right here would be higher number, okay, or resistance, if there was resistance on it. There was no resistance on this, really. I mean, it's, it's got 1.3. That's what the resistance is. What you're measuring is the coils, okay? The second test on this is it doesn't matter which one. These are. It doesn't matter which one you do. You can just disconnect one side. goes back to one over there, which means it's basically zero. And you're going to touch the grounds. Nothing. 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 Okay, that means that, see these coils? None of these coils are shorted to ground. None of these coils are shorted to ground. These are two perfectly good, um, what do you call it there, coils. So, how this works is a field. So the magnetic spins around. And it creates a field. That field produces electricity, charges up these two wires right here, and then goes to a um, what you call it, voltage regulator. This is alternating current, by the way. So it has the wave. There's a line in the middle, and it has a wave that goes on both ends of the way of the uh, line. If you had a oscilloscope, we're not going to use that. But that's how you would check them. So these are good coils. And I did that using a multimeter set on 200. 
The same thing can be used to test the ignition. The only thing with the ignition, if you're going to test it, you have to unsolder it from here. Because if you don't, you're going to be reading the coil. So you got the ground here. Okay, just ground there. And then you got your solder there. And that's the capacitor which goes to ground and your points. So you have to isolate. You have to take them completely apart to test them. That's the downside to that. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the points real quick because that's all we got really left on this is just the points. Here's your points right here. Real simple, real basic. When the flywheel comes around, it opens up the points. When you, um, what do you call it, when the can moves, it closes the points. Okay. So we want to te test it and see if it's actually working. So what we're going to do... We are going to put one on ground. Hold on one second. Okay, I got here in the vise. I got my multimeter. I don't think I can get these in the same same frame. Try shrinking it down a little bit. There we go. Okay, so right now I got it hooked up to the ground. It's on the pin. And then up to your wire on the bolt right here. And I'll see if I can do this a different way. One handed is very difficult to do. Okay, so now you can see how it's, um, what do you call reading. And now I'm going to see if I can use my thumb and open up the points. If I get this all in here, it should go to that big giant one on the end. Right there. Now they're open. Now they're closed. Open. Closed. That's all it is. It's a big switch. Open. Closed open now it's open there's no connection now if there was a short which does happen on this pin sometimes the bushing will wear out and you'll have a slight um it'll make a slight contact in at this point right here or the washer underneath will wear out and the points will drop down and this piece right here will actually make contact with the plate and then the points will be shorted so you'll be cleaning them try and do my trick with the um which we call there nail file and nothing will happen or you put these together these are insulators right here i don't know if you can see those or not let's take a, i'm going to take these points apart and i'm going to show you what they look like and then you'll have a better understanding on how they work all right so you can see these these insulators and this is this is the strap right here the spring is your ground okay and it's got these insulators i'm just going to take it all apart right now so you can see what the insulators look like. That is an insulator right there. This prevents the ground from touching the ground. Okay. If you take the insulators off, then this spring is a ground. See how it's sandwiched in between? And there's a bushing in there. That bushing wears out. That screw moves over and touches the ground. It's going to short it out. So, or if you over tighten these, you can ruin that bushing in between and also short it out. So let me see if I can take this apart for it further and show you that little bushing. That right there is the little bushing right there. You can see how it's kind of worn very easy to mistaken that bushing right there prevents the screw from hitting the um if i put this back together right now it will definitely short out and it will be on ground all the time so you got to make sure that your bushings aren't touching your um this metal strap right here, the spring, is completely isolated from the rest of it. And also, too, in this clip right here, there's also a bushing inside where my thumb is right there. And if that bushing wears out, like I said, it'll cock on the pin, and then it will touch, and then you'll short out. So those are a couple of wear signs to look for. Um, if the magneto was, if your um, side cover was off, and moisture got in there, 
you could get um, rust in between this pin. And that right there would also cause a short. It's very easy to cause a short on points. It's, a, it's an old school mechanical system. You can actually see the brown. Right there, you can see the bushing right there. You got the washer. Let me see if I can, I'm going to expand you up a little bit. See the brown right underneath the washer? That's the bushing. See it goes all the way through that brown. If the points move down that shaft, which I've seen it before, this metal plate right here will touch that big round circle piece. And then there you go, there'll be a short. If you get rust in between there or crust from uh, rain, that right there would also cause a short. Also too, you want to look at this piece right here. See how this is not straight. See how it's one at an angle? That's because when this points were on there, it wasn't properly set. So it might have been might have been some dirt and debris under your pin and holding it at an angle. That causes premature wear and twisting. When it twists, it wears on one half this brown bushing and can cause your bike to short out as well for the points. Um, and also to that uh, felt right there, if you don't lubricate that felt, you're going to cause premature wear on this piece right here. This is also a non-ground. This is um, an isolation piece as well. This does not, um, is non-conductive. So this non-conductive plastic material right here, which is kind of hard. But um, it doesn't wear out too easily. The reason why it wears out is it burns. It's friction. Every time the crank is spinning on that, or the, uh, the flywheel, and you don't lubricate that felt, you don't lubricate that felt, you're not lubricating this piece right here, the cam ride, and that right there will wear out on the cam. If you have a cam that has rusted and pitting, you're gonna you're gonna premature wear your points out a lot faster. These are all reasons why I switched over to CDI. <laughs> it's just a lot better system. But I figured I'd do a, a video on this tonight and explain to you guys why points maintenance is very important. Keeping them clean, they should look like this. This is a nice clean set of points. Although I just took it all apart, I can always put it back together. But you want to make sure that that felt right there gets lubricated i tell you guys that all the time in all my points videos and if you um if you get your side cover off and you're doing your points adjustment inspection spray it down with some lube can't hurt so you don't have to go crazy just spray the felt and you can always tell like the felts if they're not springy they're bad and you can replace those felts so think that wraps up this talk for tonight guys thank you very much for all your support and um, i'm looking forward to doing a whole bunch more videos we got some on um checking ignition coils that's going to be the next one um then we're going to move on to voltage regulators bridge rectifiers and that sort of thing and we're just going to keep plugging away at the electrical system on this guys this principle that works on the ke also works on honda's um, I'm going to show you guys another ignition system that has just two two coils. One coil for the, um, it's got two coils on it. One's for your charging system and one is for your um, ignition. And we're going to get into that style as well. We also have a bunch of videos coming up. Um, a friend of mine, Harvey Spooner, um, check out his videos. He's got a lot of cool stuff. He gave me an MB5, another one. Um, I had one a while back. And I'm kicking myself in the butt for getting rid of it. But he had one. So he's helping me out with one. Um, check out his page. He's got some. He does uh, Honda um, four stroke. Uh, four wheels and three wheels. And um, he's the one who inherited my. Uh, what do you call it there. Yamaha. Um, uh, what do you call it there. The 400. So. Anyway. So that's what he's got right now. And, and uh, he does four wheels. I do mostly. You know dirt bikes and two strokes and stuff like that i'm not really into four strokes so um anyway 
I just wanted to give you give him a shout out. Thank you, Harvey. And we'll be doing a video on that bike when I, I get that bike. So anyway, guys, um, just keep plugging away at these bikes. Don't get intimidated by them. I know I went over a lot of stuff. Go back, use the reference. This is for the charging system, not for the ignition system. Okay. On these KEs, it's real easy to do. Test both of these wires under 5 ohms and then check them to the ground. That's it. You're done. Same thing with the points. Make sure that you have your bushings in there. Make sure they look like this. If they don't look like this, throw them away. Get new ones. And um, if you notice your cam is starting to wear right here. See how it's not straight. It's at an angle. It's thinner up top on the black and wider down bottom. That's because it's, it's at an angle. So that should be wearing flat. Part of the problem is that right there, if it's wearing uneven, there might be a rust wheel, a rust groove on your um, mag. Make sure you check that. That should be wearing straight, and the points should be adjusted properly. So anyway, guys, thank you very much for all your support, and um, we'll be making a whole bunch more videos. Have a good night.